I will just say right off the bat that uh, this is a bit more of a, a, a teaching uh, service for me, uh, something that I was studying myself on uh, Monday evening and just wanted to share it with all of you and came across a, a couple good resources that really helped pull it together for me. Now, I will say right off the bat that the it's, it's like slightly awkward because of the subject matter. Uh, the title is this, and, and bear with me and I'll explain. Uh, it's the point of a pastor. Look at your neighbor say the point of a pastor. So what I want to just say right off the bat, which I think uh, most of you would uh, understand anyway, is I'm not, I'm not preaching this in a way that is... is indicative of me. We're talking about pastors. We're talking about Pastor Jack tonight, not, hey, I'm awesome and you need to just give me stuff because that's what the Bible says, okay? So I just want to clarify that. We're talking about the point of a pastor. And I want to open up with a couple verses of scripture and then just dive into this for about 20 minutes or so. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 12. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. He gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. We call that the fivefold ministry. And he gave us those uh, people, those men and women of God, for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. First Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 3, it says, And now a word to you who are elders in the churches. I too am an elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ, and I too will share in his glory when he is revealed to the whole world. As a fellow elder, I appeal to you, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you, speaking to the pastor, watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord over the people assigned to your care, meaning don't be a taskmaster, don't be somebody that is, is just the boss and, I, and you're going to do what I ask you to do or listen to what I'm telling you to do because I'm the boss. No, don't lord over the people assigned to you to your care, but lead them by your own good example. Now, the, the role of a pastor whether it be a youth pastor, assistant pastor, associate pastor, a lead pastor like Pastor Jack, or a bishop. Uh, it, it may really be, when we look at it, uh, one of the most misunderstood jobs that exists because we come to church or we come to a youth service or a midweek service or we, we come to a mission service, and what we see is somebody who holds a position in ministry as a pastor, and we see them working, so to speak, for just a, a finite window of time. We come to youth, we're here for about an hour. We come to Sunday service, we're here for about an hour and a half to two hours, and we see them operating in that time frame. Now, many people think that pastoring just consists of preaching and, and visitation, meeting with people, but really the role of a pastor entails much more, uh, much more than this. A simple Google search would show you that the average pastor works between 55 and 75 hours a week. Sometimes pastors battle feelings of stress, isolation, insecurity, worry about their, their ministry's impact on their family, and oftentimes even depression. And in addition to the weight that comes from caring for a church, uh, for a church of people with needs and a community that needs to know God, pastors often encounter spiritual warfare. And when we say that, what we mean is we're talking about times of intense pressure from Satan that requires additional prayer. But in spite of all these things, pastors press on and accept the role that God has placed before them. Because pastoring is, more, uh, is about more than just working a job. Pastoring is about more than just ministering or preaching or teaching from a pulpit or to a congregation. But pastoring is a God-given calling. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 tells us this. Uh, it says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou came forth of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet 
unto the nations. Jeremiah was a prophet. He was a a man of God that worked in the ministry. He did not specifically fulfill a pastoral role as in leading a church or a congregation, but he was a spiritual leader in his generation in the culture that he lived in. But the Bible tells us that he was called right from the very beginning of of his existence, even before his existence, to do these things. Now, the role of a pastor is really to be a a shepherd of the church. Everybody say a shepherd. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15, it says, And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. I want to read that again. God is speaking. He says, I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And there are five traits of a shepherd that we can see in effect in the life of a pastor as well. And I want to go over those five with us tonight. Number one, shepherds are rescuers. Now, if the pastor is the shepherd, we know that by proxy, we are the the rescuees. (laughs) Sure, that's right. We are the sheep. And... Unfortunately, regardless of how great your last report card was, do they still do report cards? They don't? They do? Well, regardless of how good your grades were on your last report card, I want to inform you that as human beings, we individually uh, are pretty dumb sometimes. I'm not calling you dumb. I'm calling me dumb. And you are also calling yourself dumb. Just think about that for a minute, okay? We are not always that smart. How many of you can say that in the last two weeks, you've just made a dumb decision or said something dumb? Are we good? We're all on the same page. Mitchell raised his hand really high. We can talk about it later. Now, sheep are not the most intelligent animal. And when they wander from the herd, they can easily lose their way. Sheep, they may only go a short distance, yet they can actually find themselves in this short distance that they have traveled, unable to return to the herd. So the pastor must rescue the sheep. The, 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 the shepherd must rescue the sheep. In essence, there is this uh, example that is given to us. A pastor must go out and rescue people who are lost in the world. It is the pastor's job, just like it is the shepherd's job, to go out and find them, but not only find them, but to bring them back into the fold. Uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, it talks about Jesus. When Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted, they were hungry, they were tired, and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. They did not have somebody that was caring for them. These people did not have an overseer or a leader in their life that was trying to take care of them and make sure that they did not fall into distress, into trouble. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6, it tells us, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of all of us. In John chapter, 11, uh, John chapter 10 verse 11, Jesus speaking said, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd will give his life for the sheep. The shepherd will spare no expense or time. The journey is not too long or too far or too arduous for the shepherd to go and rescue the sheep. It is the calling of the pastor to keep the flock, to care for the flock, the people that God has put under his authority, under his pastoral ministry. Sheep, uh, shepherds are rescuers. Number two, shepherds are leaders. Shepherds lead the sheep to open green pastures so they can find adequate amounts of food to eat. Pastors must feed God's sheep spiritually, not just physically, of course. And although Christ and his church have always been and always should be involved in meeting the physical needs of other people, more important than this for the pastor is to make sure that he is meeting the spiritual needs of his people. Uh, Through Bible-based advice, prayers, prayers, Preaching, teaching, and so on. The pastor provides spiritual food for the flock. John chapter 21, verse 15 to 17 says this. It says, when they had dined, Jesus, he said to Simon Peter, uh, 
Simon, son of Jonas, uh, lovest thou me more than these? And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said unto him, feed my lambs. And he said unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? And he said unto me, yes, Lord, I love you. And he said unto him, feed my sheep. And he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? And Peter, he was grieved because he said unto him for the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love thee. And so Jesus commanded him again to feed my sheep. There is this direct correlation for the one that is, is giving spiritual nutrients to the sheep that he obviously loves the Lord because he loves the Lord so much that he decides to feed the Lord's children, not physically, but spiritually. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 1 to 4 tells us this. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away, and you have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord, and I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries, whether I have driven them, and I will bring them back again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase, and I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. The shepherd will lead, the shepherd will rescue, and the shepherd will feed the sheep. Shepherds are our leaders because sheep are wanderers. They don't have a strong sense of direction. How many of you could be honest enough and say in your own life that you really didn't know what to do or, or where to turn to or where to get advice? And so you went to somebody, maybe not even a pastor, but a parent or somebody that was on the job or a grandparent, an elder in your life because you just needed some direction. How many of you have been there before? You didn't know what to do. Maybe it's a weird situation in life. You're, you're planning for the future, whatever that may look like. And you turn to somebody that knows more than you, that still cares about you, that you feel can point you in the right direction. Sheep are wanderers. They don't have a strong sense of direction, and so they need someone to guide them. And, and we all will be in seasons of our life where we just say, you know what? I'm not sure what to do here. I've never run into this scenario. I've never been in this kind of situation before. It's awkward. It's hard. It's a big decision. Whatever the case may be, and we need somebody that we can turn to to lead us. The pastor sets the direction of a local church. He must lead the church into deeper dimensions of God's spirit as we grow in him. He must direct them towards things that will aid in their spiritual walk, and he must steer them away from the things that can lead them astray. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17 tells us, Obey them that have rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. I'm going to read that again. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. Can I tell you tonight, I want to remind you of this thing that your pastors have the best intentions in mind for you. They do. I can tell you of seasons in my life where I was making decisions, or maybe I wasn't even making decisions, but my pastors, they offered me spiritual insight and guidance into certain areas of my life that I was blind to. I was young. I couldn't see the forest for the tree, so to speak. And they would speak into my life and, and give me direction in areas that I didn't even know at the time that I needed direction. But I can stand here tonight and tell you that I am glad for the direction they provided because without that direction, I might have gone just a little bit off course. Had I not listened to their advice, had I not heeded to their voice, knowing that they cared for me and loved me and were trying to lead me, not into danger, not trying to lead me astray, but trying to lead me to a safe place, I could have gone off course. And even in our lives, when we feel like our pastors don't care, or they don't understand, or they're not giving you the answer that you were hoping to hear, because that happens, we need to remember that that man of God, 
that woman of God, they are watching for our souls. The last thing that anybody on a pastoral ministry basis wants to see is a saint of God struggling or hurt or bound up in sin or relationship or addiction. So let it be known that when they speak and when they give you advice and guidance, it is for your benefit, even if it doesn't feel like it at the moment. Your pastor watches for your soul. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16, it says, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save yourself and them that hear me. This was Paul speaking to Timothy, the leader of the church. He says, Take heed unto the doctrine, for by doing it you'll save yourself, and preaching it and ministering it to other people through word, but also through action will save them. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. When you are following the leading of your pastor, you are following after God. Number four, shepherds are protectors. Sometimes being a shepherd means providing a word of caution, setting up a fence, or providing a boundary. The pastor must protect the church and the individuals in the church from the negative influence of the world and from the temptation of the enemy. He is the watchman on the wall, ready to sound the alarm at the sight of danger in your life. They are protectors. Your pastors always have your best interest in mind. And the truth is, sometimes they just know because they've seen it before. They've got experience in the matter that you may be talking about or dealing with or struggling with. They've been there, done it, seen other people do it. They just have a little bit more life experience than you do. And often what may feel like rebuke is not rebuke at all, but it is really just for your protection. Acts chapter 20, verses 28 to 30 says, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing uh, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. He is saying, after I preach the word there, when I leave, I know that there are going to be people that that come in with bad intentions that, are going, intentions that are going to try and take away and hurt and devour and destroy the flock. But the pastor, the good shepherd, is there to be a protector. And number five, shepherds are comforters. They are there with the sheep in moments when the sheep are afraid or uncertain. They sleep in the field with them, keeping watch over them throughout the night. Their presence provides a sense of security. The pastor is to bring comfort to his saints in the time of grief, despair, or uncertainty. When the waves are crashing all around, he is the congregation's rock that they can go to for help. 1 Thessalonians 5.14 says this, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Speaking of pastors, speaking of ministers, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and be patient toward all men. Psalm chapter 23, verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The psalmist is writing about Jesus. He's writing about God being that rod and that staff of correction and direction. They give comfort. Of course, preaching and teaching is an important part of the pastor's role as well. Souls cannot be saved, and people cannot learn how to grow in their relationship with the Lord without the Word of God being preached or being taught to them. But what a pastor does in the pulpit accounts for a very small percentage of their time. What we see when we come to a Wednesday night service like this, or when we go to a mission service, or when we come to service on a Sunday, when we see a pastor, when we see a man or woman of God standing up in a pulpit and preaching the word, I want to tell you that that is really just the tip of the iceberg of the ministry that they are involved in on a daily basis. As a matter of fact... For most, if not all, 
it is probably the amount that is probably the thing they spend the smallest amount of time doing because it's such a short window of time music you can come back with me i'll close here in just a minute when you see them preaching 30 or 40 minutes know that there are hours upon hours upon hours of study that went into preparing that message but know that behind the scenes when you are at work or when you are at school they were helping others in the flock that are going through a hard time. They are offering uh, protection. They are offering direction for those in the church in a time of need. They are offering comfort for those that maybe have had a lost family member or somebody that has sickness going on in their family. They are there in all of those seasons, in all of those moments, and they don't get to punch off the clock. They don't just shut off their phone at 5 and say, sorry, if, if there's an emergency, you'll have to just call me tomorrow between 8 and 5. That's not what the pastor does. The pastor is there for the flock. The pastor is there to lead, to protect, to feed, to rescue, to comfort. The pastor is there to do all of those things. Now, while we can focus on the pastor's responsibility to us, to the church, to the bride of Christ, uh, we also have a responsibility to those that are involved in the ministry. Number one, we should serve our pastors. We should serve our pastors. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12 to 13 says this. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work and live peacefully with each other. I want to read that again. To your brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and they give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work and live peacefully with each other. Yes, that man or woman of God that has been called to the ministry in a pastoral role, they have a responsibility to the body of Christ that God has placed them over. But we also have a responsibility to the ministry that God has placed over us. We don't just get to show up and and feed at the spiritual buffet that is good worship and good sermons every Wednesday or Sunday or whatever it is. We have a responsibility as well to uphold the ministry. Number two, we should obey our pastor when he preaches and teaches from the word of God. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17 says this, Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they must give an account, that they may do it with joy, not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Number three, we should follow our pastor and respect boundaries that he has placed in front of us. Again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12, that first verse I read. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. We need to make sure that we put ourselves into spiritual submission underneath our pastors. And again, this is why I stated and opened up, you know, these are weird things to talk about sometimes as a pastor. So I'm taking myself out of the picture. I'm talking about Bishop. I'm talking about Pastor Jack. I'm talking about Pastor Matt. We need to make sure that we are putting ourselves in alignment and spiritual submission, that when they preach, we are there with them. We are there amening them. And beyond that, when we leave that service, we are taking heed to the word of God that they have preached and putting it in our lives, not just in a moment, but putting it into action. We need to serve them. We need to listen to their preaching, and we need to respect the boundaries that they are preaching and teaching to us that come from the Word of God. We need to honor our pastors. The pastor needs assistance with the duties of the church, and we can honor our pastors by helping them with the work of the church. We cannot do everything, but we should do what our hand can find to do. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, not unto men. Don't do it for them. Don't hold it as a weight over their head. Hey, I, I, I filled my time and I did this, I did that, I'm doing this. No, 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 no. 
whatever you, whatever you do, whatever your hand finds to do, do it wholeheartedly. Do it with everything that is within you. And don't do it for them. Do it as if you were doing it as though God asked you himself. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. It says, elders who do their work well should be respected. This is what the Bible says should be respected and they should be paid well, especially those who work hard at both preaching and teaching. We are blessed to have shepherds. We are blessed to be a part of a church that has a pastoral team that cares and watches for our souls. And we need to make sure as young people, from the youngest to the oldest in this room tonight, that we are upholding the ministry, that we are submitted to the ministry, that we are following after our pastor's lead, and that we are honoring them with everything that we can do. I'm reminded of the story, and I can't think of the exact scriptural reference right now, but when they were, uh, when they were led and they were in a battle, and Joshua, and I think, uh, was it, Joshua was down in the, in the uh, valley fighting, I believe it was Aaron and her that were holding up the hands of their leader because when his hands would go down, they would begin to lose the battle. But there were two men there that would physically hold up the hands of their leader. And when they held up his hands, the battle was won. That was a physical battle. But I want to just give us a very simple parallel tonight. We need to make sure that we are doing everything we can to hold up the hands of our pastors. We need to make sure we're doing everything that we can to hold up the hands of our pastors. That means we need to make sure we are praying for them. We need to plead the blood over their lives and over their families because we have no idea the things that they could be going through or the situations that they could be dealing with on a daily basis. And they might put on a good front. They might seem strong and got it all together and full of health and life and vitality when they step up into the pulpit on Sunday. But what we may not see behind the scenes is that they've been getting spiritually sucker punched all week. It's hard, but the call of God is on their life to lead the sheep. That's us. To lead the flock. That's us. But our part, as simple and as practical as this may be, is to make sure that we are following their lead. We are honoring them. And we are lifting their hands up, so to speak. That's our job, to honor the ministry, to honor our pastors. As practical as it may be, you don't know how much of a help it could be if you said, hey, Pastor Matt, hey, Pastor Jack, would you mind if I, if I mowed your lawn this weekend? Hey, would you mind? Is there any errands you need run? Can I pick up groceries for you? Okay, hey, can I, can I wash your car? Is there something that you need done around the house that you've been trying to get to that you just don't have time to do? Can I tell you tonight, with 100% confidence, if you would do something as small and as practical as that, God will bless you. And you will feel good and encouraged that you did something to support the ministry that nobody else may even see, but God sees it. That is our responsibility. And that is the point of a pastor. Would you pray with me as we close tonight? Jesus, I thank you for your word. And I thank you more than what we have talked about from your word tonight. I'm thanking you that we have great pastors at this church. God, you have put men into roles and positions of authority over this flock. And we know, Lord, that on a daily basis, they are watching for our souls. And God, in this moment, I just pray blessings on their their ministry. God, I pray blessings on their family. Why don't you pray this with me? You can do it in your own words, and I'm not even looking for volume, but would you just pray a sincere prayer of blessing on your pastors right now? God, I pray for Pastor Jack. I pray for Pastor Matt and their families. Lord, I pray for Bishop Woodward and his family as well, and and Pastor Eric and his family, and everybody else that is involved in the ministry at Capital Community Church. Lord, we are blessed, and God, we just give you great thanks for the men of God that you have put in a position of authority over this church and over our lives. And God, in this moment, we just pray blessings upon them. God, we pray against any spiritual opposition that may come against them, Lord, that may come against their families. God, I pray 
pray health over them. I pray against any sickness that would try to overtake them. I pray, Lord, that you would bless them financially. God, I just pray the blessings of the Lord on their life. I pray that in this moment that virtue and strength and vitality would come back into their bodies and into their minds. And Lord, if there is an area in their life where they are feeling burnt out or discouraged, I pray that there will be a help that comes through your spirit right now that encourages them and gives them strength and lifts them up. God, we thank you for godly pastors that lead this church. And so, God, in this moment, we glean from your word and we understand what it says. We know that they are the watchmen on the wall. They are watching over our souls. They are making sure that this bride, this body of Christ stays on track till you tarry and come back for your church. So, God, we thank you for them. And, God, I just pray that in this room tonight there will be something that was said. There would just be a, a seed of the word, something that was said or spoken or read about in this place tonight that would just lodge into our spirit that we would understand that we need to heed to their voice we need to lift them up every day that we rise we need to pray and plead the blood over their lives God I thank you for them but God I pray that we would understand and feel the weight of responsibility that we have to lift them up God I thank you for your word and I thank you for your people and I pray that this word would go beyond just this room but that it would land in our hearts and that it would produce fruit in its season, that we would have reverence and respect and honor the ministry and bless them. God, I thank you for this time that we had together tonight. I pray that through this next week or so, before we gather back together on Wednesday night, Lord, that you would create uh, windows of opportunity and open doors in our personal lives to talk to somebody else about you. God, lead us to somebody that is hurting. Lord, lead us to somebody that is hungry. And God, I pray that we, we would be a light unto the world in our generation. In Jesus' name. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you tonight. Thank you so much for your attention. It's 7.58, so I finished up a few minutes early, but I do see people walking out the front door, so looks like we're just on time. High five your neighbor and tell them how good it was to be in Capital Community Youth with them. God bless you. We will see you this weekend. In Jesus' name.